another acid, just like fluoride, that causes the corrosivity of your water. So turn all of that down, turn some of it off. Well, fluoride is both a cost and an acid. And frankly, a huge waste of money. I mean, scientists, I'm not going to get into any conspiracy theories here, but I will tell you that the US EPA uh, union for all the scientists that represent 1,500 scientists in Washington, D.C., the employees had their hands tied by the government. They weren't allowed to talk about it. So their union came forward and said, turn it off. You're just wasting money. It, it doesn't do anything. That there alone is reason enough to just turn it off without getting into all the conspiracy theories. They just go away. Um, so, so that sort of is how your water treatment plant works. There are seasonal fluctuations here in the river water. When the river is down, like it is in the winter, because everything's bound up in snow and there's not runoff, the groundwater underneath the ground starts seeping in. And that's where the hard water is coming from. So you have to experience hard water in the winter. When the runoff starts coming from the snow melts and the river rises and flows as it's taking away all the snow melt water, there's no, there's no dissolve. That's, snow has no dissolved solids in it, no, no hardness. So the, the runoff water in the spring to the fall, the summer flows, aren't going to be hard anyway. So that process should not be continued either. So all those costs need to accomplish something. They need to be less than Detroit water. Because if they're not, turn on the Detroit water. It's, it's a no-brainer. Yes, sir. I'm glad you say that because the argument that the city makes, the DPW, is that the water going through the pipes, because the infrastructure is so old, the water sits in the pipes. Right. And so they have to build the chlorine level up to attack the water that is sitting in. Because as it sits there, it produces bacteria. Because it's just still water. Right. Um, now that I say that, I'm going to ask a question in conjunction to that. Is our infrastructure, is the quality of the water substandard because of the infrastructure? Yes. Yes. But the way you're treating the water is making it worse. It's making it worse. Everything goes together, which is why I'm kind of trying to get you to, I'm giving you, I'm trying to give you water treatment 101 and make it specific to Flint so that when I move into the financial, and that's where I was going with my switch over to, as a professional, we must challenge ourselves every day to compete with technology and to compete with advances in cost-saving technologies. And what I mean by that is, I would go to the water treatment plant, and I and you have very capable operators here in Flint. They're all very. I spoke with them. They're very, very capable. They need to be armed with tools to get the job done right, and they need to be given the flexibility to do the job right. They get that, and you will get the Flint water situation fixed. That being said, what I would challenge them is I would give you just just a second, and then and then I will challenge them to compete. I would be the manager and I'd say, I got five water treatment operators over here. You've got the most over-designed water treatment plant I've ever seen. And I'll explain that in the budget of things because you, you way overbuilt it about 12 years ago, which is why you have the deck you have on the water system. Um, and I would say, you need to beat. Currently, I did a, a quick back of the napkin calculation yesterday. Because you, you guys measure everything here by a box, Okay, in, in, in Flint, you use 100 cubic feet. A cubic foot, if I had a box, would hold 7.48 gallons in one cubic feet. They sell you 100 boxes at a time, and that's 100 cubic feet, which is, just move the decimal point, 748 gallons. Okay, because you do that in Flint, I'm not going to talk million gallons, because some people build a thousand gallons is their unit of water on their bill, and then they talk in million gallons of treatment. Since you guys are feed people here in Flint, I'll talk in feet. They buy water from Detroit by the thousand units, and it comes in at about sixteen dollars and some change per thousand. Okay, an acre of boxes one foot deep 
is 43,560. So it's 43 and a half thousand units. So you take the 16 times 43.5, you're basically buying water for $709 an acre foot from Detroit. Taking your $748 times the commodity charge here, the city's reselling you what they buy for $709 an acre foot for about $3,450 an acre foot. That's a $2,800 difference. And I need to find out where that $2,800 is going. Okay. So, so that is the concern. Okay, that's where I get into the economics of the situation. So if you understand that math, I would go to the treatment plant operators who you as a community, 12 years ago, invested millions of dollars in. You borrowed it from the state revolving fund. Every year, the federal EPA gives the state of Michigan, based on its population, served water, a certain amount of water funds in what they call the state revolving fund. It's federal fund money. They seed it, and then they're required to loan it to cities. You cannot not pay it back because it belongs to everybody in Michigan, and so you put it back in the fund so that the fund can survive, and then they can loan it to you again. You can use state revolving fund money to change valves, to replace pipelines, to do things like that, but you have to tell your elected officials that's what we want to use the money for. We don't want to buy a softener that costs us millions of dollars in infrastructure and millions of dollars in electricity and millions of dollars in sludge disposal and millions of dollars in chemical because soft water is actually hurting our pipes because soft, you know, you're informed. So you can say, we don't want that. We'd rather have 10 miles of pipe replaced and then wipe the little water spots off our grass fixtures. We'll wipe those off. We give us $10 million for the water pipe. But you've got to be informed and asked what you want. Okay? Back to what I was saying, the community has to participate in the design of these systems. So I'll get there in just a second, then I'm going to open it up for questions. I want you to get the, the whole picture. The way water rates are set is very, very simple. Okay? You've heard historically people use the phrase zero based budgeting. That's kind of what you need to do here in Flint. You need to throw the baby out with the bathwater to start over. Okay? And what I mean by that is, is you need to take all of your fixed costs, your loan with the state revolving fund. Okay? You need to take your, your pension fund that's underfunded for the water department employees. I don't think you should be paying for the dog catcher underwater. Okay? So you need to take the water department fund employees. Those are fixed costs. You need to take all that, all those, those costs, and you need to say, we have 10,000 meters in the Flint system, and there's 12 months in a year. And you take those fixed costs, and they're going to come up with a number. You know, make them tell you what every number is that goes into those fixed costs. Whatever that number is, you divide it by 10,000, divide it by 12, and that's your monthly meter service charge. That's with no water. You guys are paying 50 something now? Okay? So that's how you get that's that's how you get to that number. Okay? It's really, really simple. And then on the commodity charge, what's coming through your meter should be your labor. Your electricity, your chemicals, those variable costs that go into the commodity. And then you can say, okay, treatment plant operator, can you make me $600 an acre foot water? <clears throat> I got a bid over here from Detroit at $709. You're $710? You five guys go home. I'm going to buy water from Detroit. Okay, I mean, it's literally, we've got to, they're talking about, um, you know, economic deprived communities, you know, economic shifts, cost of service. You need to know what goes into that cost of service if you don't appreciate what you're buying. And so to get that understanding, you need to know these bases and how it's funded. So then you can make the decision, my water costs $3 a unit, not seven. And I don't, that's not mine at home, but $3 a unit, it's just a hypothetical. I can save 20 cents by not feeding fluoride that I don't want anyway. Community makes that choice. I, I want soft water. 
community makes that choice. I don't want that much chlorine in my distribution system. Or I don't need that water storage tank that was built because I was on Detroit water and now I'm not, so I don't need that. I can cut that out. Those are the decisions you can make once you're informed. I will talk about the health concerns of all of the chemicals I found in both the Detroit and Flint water, chemicals I found that are coming out on the horizon associated with disinfection and disinfection byproducts. Chlorine is good. Chlorine is needed. Chlorine does not smell in water. What you smell are those byproducts. Okay, we've all been taught when you walk into a swimming pool at the city plunge and you go, whoo, and then you go home and you drink the Flint tap water and you go, smells like the swimming pool. That's not chlorine. What you're smelling is the byproducts. You know what people do in swimming pools, right? <laughs> okay? That's why it smells. Okay? You sweat. That's ammonia. Well, the kids do in the pool. <laughs> that's ammonia. Those are the byproducts. Okay? And so that's what you smell. Now, before I address your questions, because I want this out there as the basic thing of concern that I have with trial and methane violations is this. If you are at home and you're consuming the water and you see color, don't drink it. It's not safe. That is not a true statement. You cannot sit in an ivory tower in Lansing and say, the water is safe, if the water is safe in Flint without testing it or coming out and looking at it. It's a very dangerous thing to say. And the reason I say it's a dangerous thing to say is that regulator sitting in his cubicle in Lansing doesn't know that there wasn't a backflow or cross connection situation on your street. They don't know if there was a water line break on your street. They don't have a clue. They're generally saying, ah, oh, there's red water complaints coming out of Flint. Screw them. Tell everybody the water's safe to drink because it's OK at the treatment plant. They have no clue what it's like at your house. Right. And I defy you to find me one analysis of these jugs of red water, and these jugs of brown water, and these jugs of black water that they can say is safe. They can't because they haven't run a single test on anyone. Okay. They just have not done it. Now, if you're at home and your water's clear, it smells a little like chlorine, um, but you can, you can see it. It doesn't taste bad, and you're, you're okay. The biggest danger with trihalomethane violations is hot showers and dishes. Okay? And the reason is, is because those byproducts are inhaled. Once they're inhaled, they go into our bloodstream. Once they go into our bloodstream, they circulate. Okay, I am not going to be as impacted. The men in this room aren't going to be as impacted. You might get bladder cancer if you went in 70 years. Okay? If you are a pregnant woman in your third trimester, the worst medical information studies out there is low birth weights associated with inhalation of trihalomethane in the third trimester. Okay? And this is one of the things that Aaron and I have been fighting for across the country. We have actually given it a name. We call it the September baby. And the reason it is, is because all the drinking water distribution systems across, you know, pretty much the, the, the center of the country do what they call chlorine burns. They open up their valves in the summer, they increase the chlorine feed, and they send it out. But at the same time, they're in total compliance with the Safe Drinking Water Act. Now you ask, how are, how are we in compliance with the Safe Drinking Water Act with a trial on methane violation? Well, the, the, the law says, you take your sample on June 30th for trihalomethanes. Oh. You're only supposed to quarterly sample for trihalomethanes. You take it at all the points around the distribution system, and everything's you know fine, fine and dandy because you know when the sample date is. You know how to tweak the treatment plant, turn the chlorine back. Everything's good. Then you turn the chlorine up on July 1st, and you start doing your chlorine burnout. You're burning out all the biofilm for not taking the dirt out of the water. And you do it all the way up, June, July, August. You go back, you sequester it, you take your quarterly sample in August. 
What happened for the 90 days between June and August? You were burning these people out. Now, is the water safe? No. It's no different than <clears throat> going 150 miles an hour down the freeway when you know the police aren't going to be there. It's the same thing. If you know that the police are going to be on the freeway, you ain't going to speed. You're going to slow down. You know the police aren't going to be there, you're going 150 miles an hour down the freeway. And that's what your water system does for 90 days between compliance testing. That doesn't mean it's safe because you're drinking water those 90 days or you're inhaling water those 90 days. So this misconception that the water is safe to drink um, is, is literally somebody in a cubicle that has no information to base that statement on. And what you need to do is be very, very vigilant. If you can see it, taste it, or smell it, don't drink it. That doesn't mean it's safe either, but those are obvious things. And, and, and working with people here in Flint, I've seen the water jugs. I've seen what's coming out of the taps. And for them to say that it's safe is just not being honest. No, With that, it's your meeting. The doctor kicks me out, <laughs> and I'm gonna I'm gonna field questions, and and uh, we'll go from there. Yes, ma'am. She has hers up. Oh, okay. I just I was gonna go like this. Go ahead, ma'am. Two questions. Sure. Um, is it was listening to you talk about washing the dishes? Yes. Is it safe to or is it feasible to wash your dishes? It is, it is, but what? No, but it, it, it's, you're not going to get anything from that um, because it'll evaporate and dry. It depends on where your vent is, okay? Mm -hmm. If you're going to wash your dishes in a dishwasher and you have one of those trap vents up on your sink that spits every now and then, that's just venting all that stuff into your house. Oh. Okay, so just stay away from that. Mm -hmm. um, I will tell you, I, it, this, this will amaze you. Aaron and I do environmental cleanup stuff all over the country. And we're having a lot of cases where they, they're indoor air, volatile organic compounds, benzene, underground storage tanks are leaking, and the gases are coming up in people's homes. They're doing, we're forcing them to do testing in the homes, and they're coming back and they're saying, we found high levels of chloroform in this house. But everybody knows that's coming from the drinking water supply. Um, <laughs> Shell Oil Company is putting in reports today. No. So that's where it's coming from. It's coming from your dishwasher, your clothes washer if it's in the house, and, and a hot shower. If you have young children, please, warm baths, no hot showers. You can tell us try all that they think it's My other question is, for a um, immune compromised person, yes. I know it's not, I'm not drinking the water. My immune, my immune system is compromised. And I'm not drinking the water. I'm not cooking with the water. Uh, I try to make ice cubes with the water, and my whole freezer smells awful. And I try to wash my clothes with the water, and after I put them in the dryer, my clothes smell awful. Mm -hmm. So, um, I guess I'm asking my whole question is, as long as my immune system is compromised, I shouldn't be drinking that water or doing anything with that water. And when you spoke about the fact that taking showers with it and breathing it in, you said that's worse, that's, that's Or trihelmet. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Any of the volatile chemicals in water, the volatile means is, 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 is that it will, it will vaporize, become vapor, or become airborne. It will separate from the water and become an airborne contaminant. Mm -hmm. That's a volatile. And those and that's what that's what we talk about when we talk about those mm -hmm. So now immune compromise. A community, and I'm not going to give this community clean bill help on the oil water notices yet, for the same reasons that I, I often have a, a beef with the way they do water quality sampling. I mean, when somebody goes out and they do a water quality <coughs> sample, um, you know, at MLK and Broadway, they go out, they open the tap, they, hopefully you guys are using sample taps and not people's house taps. Some cities are still trying that. You go out, you fill the sample bottle, and you let it go. And you get a, a positive for call form that issue they require the boil water notice and the bells and whistles go off and everything like that. All that tells me is that there was bacteria there on Tuesday. So, you know, what it means is that there's been some compromise in the distribution system that caused bacteria to be in the water supply at that location. It doesn't tell me anything about the system. Okay. Now, because this water system has so much biofilm in it and so much rust and so much corrosion and all these different things that the water system is experiencing right now, 
there's bacteria all over the system. I don't know where to find it. They don't know where to find it. You can't give it a clean bill of health until it's cleared out. And so immune compromised, I would be very careful. Okay, so cancer patients can do that. Right. I would be, be very, very, very careful. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Fifteen years ago, I was involved in a lawsuit with the city of Frankfurt Sewer we begged at that time for them to fix the infrastructure. Fifteen years later, that infrastructure has not been fixed. I have a compromised immune system now because I breathed in the mold from the sewer backups. And now we're involved with this water thing. I don't know which way to go because I just was sick for two months with respiratory and I'm still not totally over it. So I refuse to drink the water. I'm scared to death to bathe in it. Me too. Me too. Warm baths. You have, if you have to, I'm just giving you the suggestion. Warm baths as opposed to hot, excuse me, hot showers. Okay. okay, I just, I don't know where to go with the city of Flint because it's like talking to a brick wall to do anything. Right. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm mixed on that. They, sometimes they, they, they give you the appearance that they want to do the right thing, but it's like they're, they're making up they're making up for 30 years of not collecting the proper reserves to do capital improvements right. overnight. That's right. And that's not fair to you because what's happened is, is, is I understand you lost 10,000 people last year or something. What's the 1,000 a, thousand a year? Okay, those 1,000 people used the system for the last 30 years and now they're gone and they're asking you to make up the difference every that's time right. somebody needs right 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 So that's where it's like, I, I think there needs to be a compromise as to how those funds are collected. You know, I, I really, this whole emergency manager situation is interesting. <laughs> <laughs> That's a word. You're telling me wrong. But he cannot, he cannot um, come in here and try to make everything right overnight. And because he's trying to do that financially, uh, he's collecting a whole he's lot of money. He's collecting a lot of money. He's selling off a lot of assets. Yes, he's selling yes, a lot of assets. assets. He is not trying to make the money right. right. He's trying to sell off everything he can. It's he's not just him by himself. That's I call him a gang. It's a gang of people. Right. He's uptown, downtown, he's up Are you taking it's questions? All it's, <laughs> it's all of other people. It's not, it's not just he himself. It's the governor, uptown, downtown. All the way down. Oh, yes. okay, I'm kind of going right. So you, you, whoever had their hand up first, you two right here. Okay, go ahead. My, 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 my thing is, all right, we, we know there's a lot of problems. Right? Yes. Right. Now, here, here's what I got to ask you. Viola, which they call it in as a consultant firm, you and I both know that this consultant firm has been put out of countries, right. states, been sued in San Francisco for dumping wastewater, plant exploded in Indiana. They privatized the wire system and cut the workforce by 86%. I asked for uh, documentation under the FOIA, which I also asked for a consumer confidence report, which they're supposed to give every year annually before July the 1st. Um, the contamination, monies, and everything else, if they are serving the public. My question to you is, is, is TCHM consists of multi-different uh, chemicals. A lot of people are complaining about rashes, skin burning, and all that, which bromoform contribute a lot of that, you know, to that uh, thing because it's a byproduct. How do we force them, not ask them? This is one of the solutions of what we need. Not, not ask them because, just like you said, the emergency manager is interesting. It's dictator. It's a dictatorship. So we can't ask anymore because, in fact, this is where we have to force. Because you have a whole lot of power that be up at top that's working along with the emergency manager. And, and, and the people, which you said earlier, Detroit is offering 1,000 cubic feet, which is seven, equivalent to 7,498 gallons, where Flint is charging by 100 cubic feet. Mm -hmm. And if we get water from Detroit, that's $8 per household, which we would have to pay, where Flint is charging $13 per household. How do we make them give us where, where 
U of M just tested their water, and this is winter time, and the TTHM is supposed to be real low right now, and they tested theirs, and it's 0.72, and that's real high for winter time, so I know when springtime comes, it's going to be even higher. Mm -hmm. And it's a revolving door, and they're just trying to hold us back mm -hmm. until the KWA pipeline come in. They don't want us to switch back to Detroit water because the plant residents are going to say, since we're on Detroit water, we don't want the KWA pipe. How can we force them right now to say, hey, we need Detroit water because that consulting firm that they have, you're not going to be here next Wednesday. Right. They're going to come back next Wednesday and say, this is what we can do, which we know is a bald face lot. Right. So is there any information that you can give us right now in, in, in writing? So when they do come down here, if they don't open it up to the public, you can give it to the city council so that they can pose questions to them to test them in that lie so that we can force them, Viola, to go and pack their bags and run away like they did in St. Louis, Baltimore, Argentina, uh, Philippines, San Francisco, Indiana, Ohio, Connecticut, yes, and all the rest of the yes. That's great. Okay. Um, for those of you that have heard that question, that's a compound question. I'm going to tell you all of this story because you cared enough to come out and actually start getting this ball rolling in the right direction. The way the system works is the Safe Drinking Water Act is controlled by the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency for the entire country, long and long protected. They give primacy to all the states. Primacy means the states are hereby deputized to handle the law. Okay, to every state except for North Dakota. North Dakota said, screw you guys, you come on and do your own program here, we don't mind but it's in 49 states. <clears throat> they have the responsibility to issue a permit to Flint and to keep all of the permit conditions and water quality analysis in their offices of the Capitol in Lansing. <laughs> Boy, they're. They're going to hate me for saying it. <laughs> they are. Boy, are they. What you need to do is you need to say, you know, until the city becomes, you know, forthcoming with more, with, you know, transparency and open information that satisfies you, you have every right as a citizen of the state of Michigan to say, you maintain the license for the Flint water system, show me your file because it's your responsibility. And if you can't, within the next 10 days, I may be calling the EPA up and saying, Michigan, you no longer have privacy. Thank you. Okay, and that's how you do it. And that's what we're trying to teach people to do because these state regulators are not getting the job done. They're sitting in Lansing saying, oh, your water's safe. It meets or exceeds all federal and state safe drinking water act requirements. Go right ahead and consume it. They don't know. So is it, is it beneficial for us to go in mass numbers to Lansing and require, I mean, do you have to FOIA? If it's a department, we should just be able to walk in and request the documents. That's and what they every do. Every state has its own set of rules as to how that's done. Um, I agree with you. You can actually, in, in a lot of states, if you show up and say, you know, and they, they, they bring the file out on those little carts and they walk in the little glass room and they watch it. But they, a lot of states will let you do that. I cannot tell you that I got all 49 states' rules in my head right now. Right, I'll see Nana, but when you talked about that, if I may, when you got state representatives and state senators, just as you got council people on the local level, we don't have to force it. We can get it. So state reps and others should be able to get it. And when you were speaking about the elected officials at the beginning, the point that you made, the emergency manager, and that's why I wanted Pastor Harris to host this, because as a community and a group and with the pastors, when you share this expertise, and nobody even at this point can say they ain't learned enough. Mm -hmm. When you see Mr. Woodson leave and ask that compound question, we know, and now you the confirmer, because they bringing in people who talk on their side. Right. So as this thing unfolds, believe me, politically, we'll do some stuff 
as long as we know the expert that's telling the truth is there with us and is accessible, that's why I wanted to open this up. Because believe me, you can't keep this closed. A handful of people can't meet you, and you don't know how smart this community has became. And not only do I as a council and others need to know, but state reps, the congressmen, why they giving away wild, they need that? to be learning what buttons to push as elected leaders. Yeah. So thank you, Quincy. I'm going to be quiet yeah, no, because no, no, I no, can't no, even no, stay no, still no, on it. Yeah, it's important for you to understand. And I, I would challenge you when you go home and do internet lifts and things like that, look at the California example. And, you know, and not just because I'm from California, but it, it, it shows you one person can make a difference. And, and what happened in California was our primacy agency was the California Department of Public Health. And they had the drinking water program there until July 1st, 2014, for the last seven months, it's, it, they formed another department. And what happened was a legislator, your state elected rep, he went with a couple citizens to the health department and said, what are you going to do for this community? And the head of the health department said, I'm in charge of the water companies, I'm in charge of the hospitals, I'm in charge of all the, you know, the, the clinics. I'm too busy for that water. Everybody knows that the water guy's got it figured out. Just, just go, go, go figure it out. That legislature went back and he wrote a law saying, kill the Department of Health, take the drinking water program away from them. And he put that bill in. One man. Got a lot of attention. So much so that the governor said, I'm the administrator of all the departments, and that's how it is in Michigan. That's an administrative branch of government, so they all fall under the governor. I recognize I have a Department of Public Health problem. They're all fired. Oh, this governor will do that. <laughs> <laughs> one man. One man did it in California. And they restarted. Now they have the Division of Drinking Water and the Department of Water Resources in California. That department, they're still trying to find out where the bathroom is, but they're brand new. And they literally ran <coughs> from Fresno to that in California. Wow. That's Wait, it. There you go. Prince, please. Okay. Prince, go ahead. How you doing? I'm Bob um, Quincy working here. Um, what you just said um, kind of scared me a little bit. I'm like, I, I don't know if I ever want to drink the water. And I don't care what y'all say. But what if, um, from what you, your expertise and what you just said, what if like uh, us in this room stood with me and solidarity and all, everybody stood up that was on board to um, put the um, water bill money in the escrow? I wonder how many people in this room would do that. If y'all would, would y'all please stand up? Well, let's see how many people. So what if all of us decided to um, go find 10 to 20 to 100 people that would be willing to stand with us to stop paying our water bill because you're not listening to us when it comes down to us protesting, rallying, speaking out against this, showing you bad water, and um, based on what you just told us, and what Councilman Eric Mays and Montez Xavier has been going to try to advocate for us, they only, it's, only, it's only two of them, and they need, they don't have the power up on the emergency manager, and the rest of their colleagues um, that's supporting our effort, what if all of us mobilize residents in the city of Flint, because I think that's kind of seemed like where some of us mindset is thinking. And we went to a judge and asked them to allow us to put our money into escrow to stop us from getting shut off, because I know some of us might be, some of them that's been standing up probably thinking they don't want their water turned off. So we understand that. But what if the judge will honor our us putting our money in escrow because we have some questionable issues with this water situation and we kept our money instead of giving it to the city to um, use our money for other things when y'all think it's going because we need infrastructure and you just saw the revolving loans from the state could pay for that so we know that's not true um, but what if all of us stood together and put our money into the escrow to um, stop paying our water bills downtown, and some of us 
Then got our water turned off where there's no assistance to help them because of the increase. So they done really put a lot of residents in harm's way by this increase where a lot of residents around me, some of the water is off. And there's no assistance. They lied to us the other day and did a political thing that told us they was going to be at a church giving the help of people. And you had hundreds of people standing out there thinking they was going to get some help. And the only thing they did was have Home Depot and them talking about buying a water filter. Right. And you <laughs> not away. And it was like, really? You know, I mean, they, they better be lucky we didn't um, turn that right. building up. That right. Right. So they, right. they, they got to, let me finish. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. Right. They got to, um, we could have rioted it up in there and flipped the building. That's, and I would have been one of the ones going to jail. Because to have all the people, elderly people standing outside talking about y'all going to help people, they weren't there to get no free bottles of water. Y'all want to give us something? Yeah, that's a bonus. But they weren't there for that. They was there because y'all done jacked our water bills up. And people there were hundreds and thousands of dollars of water bills. Y'all put on the media. So it's like they're using the media to calm the storm. When it's a fire out here dealing with this situation. So the only other thing that I think that we could do to push back at this point in time is stop paying our water bills and put it into an escrow and have a judge sign off us telling the city that they cannot turn our water off. As long as you see that we're putting out money in the escrow, you can't touch us till we deal with this situation. Thank you. Yes. There's power in numbers. <laughs> to do that, it's different in every jurisdiction, and I'm not sure what their response would be. I think it would take the court order um, to stop them from turning off. And then the judge would, you know, have to put a, an administrator in, which, you know, I don't know enough about local politics. I understand the situation with this emergency manager coming down from Lansing and telling you guys what to do. Um, and and so a local judge could do that for you. Um, that's local politics. I don't know enough about the local court system. That would take people smarter than me. But it could be done. Um, you know, uh, what, I wouldn't want to give you advice that got your water turned off. I would tell you that they should stop with this turning off of water because the rates they are collecting now, they're making more money than they should be. It doesn't take me a long time to figure that out. Um, so, I mean, they're putting a lot of money in the bank so that they can do things in the future, but they put it on your backs unfairly very quickly. So, who, who is next? I don't want to. Okay, go ahead. Tony Palladino from the east side. I've been to a lot of these meetings. And like Mr. Quincy said, I think it's more than a state. I think we need the federal government come in, the Army Corps of Engineers come in and clean all this out one push because we, it's only a 30 mile city. I think they can come in. There's miners that can go through the pipes, they expand the boom, we got operating pipes. As far as the valves and all that, they're their valves. Now I went to the same thing he did. I've been to the first meeting with Mr. Croft, who was handling the water. Please, I, I'm telling you guys, I'm about ready to snap up in here. Here's where I'm at. Mr. Croft stood, stood there and said one thing, but on the same note, he's the only one who took a drink of that nasty water. I went to the next meeting at the church. That makes him smart? No, 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 I'm saying that. <laughs> it makes him smart enough to know that, hey, I'm going to stand and act like I'm one of you, yeah. so but I've watched this guy in the last four months. I went, to the, I went to the U of M meeting. Now, this is no joke. This guy is talking now. He's been lined up to say what he has to say. I'm an average citizen. I believe like the rest of us. I'm crying. My granddaughter's got to go home. I'm frustrated. I went to that. Catholic thing. What a joke. It's like a bunch of cattle who are walking through there and I'm getting madder and madder and madder because these people are sign this, here's this, you're going to get this. No, we're done with that. We need to step up, jump on that bus and get down there. We need the federal government in control. There's no, yes. We need the Army Corps of Engineers to do the system now. And here's the thing as far as immune, my mother in law has it, my granddaughter and I have it. So what do we do? What are we going to set out in Grand Lake or something? Where are we going to go? We're in the city of Flint. We're suffering. That's right. Why are we going to have, what, we got to leave? What, we got, we got the plague or something? You understand? It doesn't make sense. You're old, you're elder, you got kids. Get out of our city. We can't give you the water. Now I'm healthy. Come on. Now I'm healthy. And I got to take this stuff. And look what it's doing to me. Look at the hair, man. Just I, from the 24th mile, I got a can this big from hair that I lost. Understand what I'm saying? My wife, my grandbaby, she made this little sign right here. 
She's got to go home to Davidson. I love Flint water. You know what I'm saying? I want water. I'm on my grandma. And I, I, where do we go, man? Where do we go? What do we do? What do we do? I got a grandbaby. She, I got an immune system. What? What, I can't drink the water? What am I? What do I got to do? Got to go home? You know what I'm saying? Where? This is my home. That's right. I'm sorry, guys. I've been to all these meetings. This stuff's got to stop. Right. We got to get the federal government in here. Yes. <laughs> An interesting thing that I've discovered, and, and I haven't done a, I mean, this is, I'm just speaking from the heart, not, not from any qualified perspective on, on pricing and things like that. Um, knowing home values, knowing rents, knowing no. taxation, knowing those things in this area, and it's different around the country, you all know that. Um, and then looking at water bills, some of you are paying more for water and sewer than you are for your mortgage. Yeah. 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 Exactly. I just, I mean, statistically, there's something fundamentally wrong when, when you know, cost of living things like that are associated with that. And that might require, you know, federal government intervention. One of the things that we found very interesting when we looked at the case as it was unfolding in Flint was the international attention that the water shutoffs in Detroit were receiving. Right. right. And then and then as I got into it and I started looking at it and I understood that they basically were wholesaling you water. They were making money off of you. But a fair a fair markup in that, you know, I heard that there were concerns about the fact that they charged by distance and elevation away from the city. Well distance and elevation to me, equates to electricity. So there should be there should be a premium on water by the time it gets here. But they're still charging you. An hour and a later. Well, go no, Detroit less than than what they're actually earning on it. So in fact, the way it works is is the bigger the system, the lower the costs. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when when Flint shut off Detroit, in theory, you were supposed to be getting less expensive water in Flint. Mm -hmm. People in Flint got hurt. We know that. Mm -hmm. You hurt Detroit too, right. because now they got to spread that cost. So it's like that action was like two wrongs don't make a right. right. <laughs> and so, yeah. yes. Um, I just want to pose this question to you real quick. Um, I understand exactly what you're saying. You and I talk. He's absolutely correct that we do need a federal court intervention, a federal government intervention. But I say federal court. You being an expert. I'm good at filing motions to the federal court, which I will file a 42 U.S.C. 1983 complaint for. I can survive the hurdle in this report, in this motion, and it can get passed in the Eastern District. But I need an expert. And if you can write me a report telling the effects of the TTHM that they're not disclosing to us, I would do the motion to the federal court because I've done it before. I filed the motion to the federal court and I survived the hardest hurdle. And a law, a law professor told me I didn't have a case. So I fought against two attorney generals who've been to law school. I've never been to law school and I'm kicking their butt. Come on. So I would do this. And if he didn't take the case until, I, until they offered me $10,000, then you realize I had a case. Right. But I had already survived the hurdle right. that he didn't think he could survive. So back to my statement or my question, because it's not about testimony. Could you give me a report about the TTHL on an expert level that I can attach to my 42 U.S.C. 1983 complaint form? Because I have to have that in order. Because if I don't have that, they would dismiss it mm -hmm. for lack of merits. Right. Court, federal court, state court, you're looking at years? No, 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 no. What I would do, I would ask for an injunctive relief. The injunctive relief would ask to shut off using the Flint River Waterway. And I would use your expert testimony connected and I would ask for an expedient ruling. Because there's a lot of lawyers that won't file these suits. Right. But there may be some that will. But I want to do it because I can spend all the time in the law library at the circuit court and get, and get to work. So if you would give me an expert testimony from your standpoint that I can connect to that motion, I will file that motion to the federal court in the Eastern District. I would like to commit to this community that we start five <coughs> different fronts all at the same time. Right. Can that be one? And that can be one. Okay. Right. Okay. Long that can be one. And your escrow can be another one. Right. Okay. But and what, it is I want, what I want to talk about, and I'm probably going to jump pretty hard to this, because um, I don't know local politics. Um, I, I have been a guest in this community for about 48 hours, <laughs> and I will tell you I met with the mayor for coffee. 
I have met with Mr. Croft. I think the treatment plan operator is top notch. I think Mike is a smart, smart man. Um, everybody here seems great. Um, I don't think, you know, I got the magic, you know, bean in the pocket. I don't think I'm going to get, but I haven't been kicked in the teeth yet. Right. Okay? You have. I'm respectful of that. Hey, Bob. So what I'm saying, where I'm going with this, is I got two of you here. Okay, and I got I got a mayor. You got three counts. Three. Okay. And you got some that couldn't be here, but we know who they are. But you and got you, three. And, and you are all you are all with your own agenda. That's correct. But this one has been pretty darn common. It's common. It's unison. And we've got a report coming out from Veolia on Wednesday. Um, they're all concerned. Because of the work you've done, not because of the work I've done. Let's hear it. I'm giving you a few Let's hear that. I want to take them on face to face and tell them they can be. I want to take them on face to face and tell they can be. And what I mean by that is nobody's lied to me yet that I know it. <laughs> um, meaning. I mean, the mayor made some commitments yesterday. Croft made some commitments yesterday. Mike made some commitments yesterday. Um, until they don't do them and I have to embarrass them on a national level, I'm not going to. They haven't kicked me in the teeth yet. What I mean by that is, is let's look into the escrow thing. Let's look into the, the federal court case. Let's look into a local jurisdiction case. Let's call your representatives in Lansing. Let's FOIA those guys. Let's do all those things at the same time. That's right. And hope one of us wins. That's right. And you want the one to win to be the one that's, that can get the most early resolution. Okay. The commitments they've made to me should fix this by spring. Yes. Yeah. 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 Spring I hold out hope. I'm I am a, I am an optimist until I get kicked in the teeth, and they haven't kicked me in the teeth yet. And, and Bob, yes. but that could be what Quincy said. What Quincy says is very good. That can be in the 42 USC too, because you can articulate many remedies that you want inside of that motion. And then I'm going to end this. It has to go at a federal level. Yes, sir. Because right now we're dealing with arrogance and you're dealing with greed. Yes, the only way that they're going to submit to anything that we want done is you have to take it and make it a legal issue. Right. And you need an expert. And that's why I ask you and I plead and I implore you to please make a, an expert report and give it to me, and I will do it on behalf of my colleagues, and Eric will help me. Uh, me Eric say, will help let me. Let me say this. He said it best. You can file in federal, you can file in state, no, and you state. can listen to me. We ain't going to argue over the five fronts. Now, you want him to be an expert. You say my name as a colleague, but I understand that the jurisdiction over the emergency manager is in the court of claims because the, he's an agent of the state and he works for the governor. So if you go file in federal court, we met with lawyers last week. We might file the identical action because of concurrent jurisdiction in state court. So all I'm saying is listen to what's being said. He said five fronts. We don't care if it's six fronts. And so that's what we got to do. We got to understand that we can walk and chew gum at the same Amen. time. We can be an octopus to pass the name on another front, met with the governor, and demanded clean water on our behalf. That's why we're here with them to support him and what the pastors is doing. Some people are <coughs> maybe an atheist, and they got another front, and we can support them. We need the um, report, and we need the expert because that's called an exhibit, no matter what court you're in. And it's glorious. I've had plenty of success. Remember, they said I was going the wrong way on folks that fight with four flats. Three not years. But the point is, it's glorious better than me. So I say, as we debate this, yes, councilman, if you want to do it, we can support that. But I agree with the five and six fronts. And as a group, we stick together and pull it off. Only one has to win. As we get
get to the end, remember, y'all go quick. Shut me up because at 4.30 is Valentine's Day and we out of here. I guess my question would be with the uh, K excuse me, KWA coming in, will we be going through this again? I don't, maybe I don't see too much that's going to happen until the, that's me, until the KWA allegedly come in. Will we have this tainted water with the KWA come in or will it be just clean and perfect and life back or should we expect something? I don't know enough about the water quality in the Huron. I will tell you it's of a better water quality in Michigan and certainly a better water quality than the Flint River. Um, but I'm going to throw a concept out to you that you might go, wow, it's crazy. Um, water can be too clean. Okay? And so we could find ourselves, I would hope that they've gone up there and run tests on this water and, and tested it in this treatment plant, okay? And then, and then tested it in relationship to, you could do corrosion tests. So they need to bring 55 gallon drum of that stuff down here. They need to treat it with these treatment technologies. And then they need to put little tabs of, of cast iron and steel in it and see how corrosive it is. Could be worse <laughs> at the end of all this. I would hope that it's better, okay? Now, to give you some, some peace of mind, if the, if the recommendations I've made are implemented, some of them could begin Monday. Turn the fluoride off. Or, better, or if you don't want to do that, because Mike's afraid of it, it's bad stuff. He didn't even want his employees going in the room because it's a bad acid. It will hurt you. Okay? Let it all feed out so you don't have any inventory. Or if you're afraid the state's going to come and make you turn back on, just turn the pump off. And then when they come in and you do a order to turn back on, then you got it. But just go up and go, here, here, here how hard it's going to be. Off. Push your button. Off. It's gone. Okay? Go to the softeners. Live. Off. The aluminum uh, polymer, polyaluminum chloride that they're using. Try it with some of the ferric. So you can take your ferric. They're feeding ferric at 18 milligrams per liter. Drop it down to about 9. Cut it in half. And then take three or four parts of the, the, the polyaluminum chloride that you already have there. Stop feeding it the softener and feed it over there as a filter, what they call filter aid. Then take that clean water and run it through that softener room that we went through. Just don't put any garbage in it. They, it blew my mind. I told the councilman yesterday. They make the water really, really clean. And then they take it over into the softening room and they dirty it back up. <laughs> it just drove me crazy. Okay. And then when you do all that, because you have the ozone that you have, the investment was made there 12 years ago. That's the bond you're paying off. Okay. Go ahead and turn the chlorine off in front of the filters. Change the filters out to the granular activated carpet. And then after the filters, turn the chlorine down because it's not going to be fighting with all the dirt you just took out of the water. Do that. You know, and, and then if the system doesn't start cleaning up in about six weeks, then they can add what they call polyphosphate, which will, instead of the, the white calcium carbonate coating that you're going to see on the pipes, the polyphosphate will add a shiny glass coating on the inside of the pipe. <coughs> but the corrosion will stop. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Am I saying uh, Aaron Brockovich? Is that her name? Yes. Okay, I have great respect for her because I, I remember watching her movies and, and know about her. Uh -huh. and I really thank you for being here because I that is making a big difference that it had to do with the people in Flint coming together and not compromising and standing for what they believed. Because a lot of the people, when I remember, a lot of people were drinking the water and everything was fine. There was no corrosion <coughs> until they changed to the other water. Right. And that's when they noticed the smell and the taste. Right. I mean, right away. And then that's when you started seeing the, them emptying out the hydrants. I mean, on every corner, you can see them emptying out the, the hydrants. So I'm just saying that it was noticed right away when they changed the blood water. Sure. The taste and the smell. So when you're saying that the corrosion, um, it began right away. It is, there are 25,000 plus drinking water systems, you know, in the United States of like this size. But I thank you there, for being here. Oh, thank you. And there are no two water qualities that are the same. No two. They're all different. Um, you know, there are certain specific categories that you can treat them in. 
But you have to show respect for that water quality. You can treat anything. Okay? Um, but when you make a switch like that, you, you do not make political decisions in haste like that um, because it really did some serious damage. And it's going to take a while to uh, uh, un uncover from that. Well, just real quick about the gentleman in the hat. Okay, go ahead. Let me just, he's had his hand up. Go ahead, sir. Yep, yep. Oh, thank you. Uh, number one, I appreciate your financial analysis early on in your presentation. I thought it was excellent. I know you've only been here a short period of time. Would you agree or disagree of a fig figure of $12 million being bandied about to rehook with Detroit Water? Right? I heard that's not true. I heard that, they, that there is no reconnection fee at all. Right. And you need, to get, you need to get an honest answer to that question. Um, I would tell you, I think Detroit would probably turn you back on. There's no reconnection fee. Open a valve. Right, there's no reconnection fee. We got all the prices. We still hook to Detroit. He's exactly right. All we have to do is open the bail. All those myths are gone. Pay the money, open the bail. Just real quick, lightly. Yeah. I'm paying $156 a month for water. I am willing to take half of that and pay it for G to come in and work with our water department. Yeah. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> I'd, I'd rather have your expertise in it because apparently it sounds to me like you've seen how they're working on the inside. Yes, and there's a few guys in there that know what's going on. And on the other half, just like I told Crop at the meeting, I worked with the journal for all the years. The, the uh, young guys couldn't run the presses like the old guys could. Right. So they bring them in and let them work on that, understand, knowing the knowledge of that. Right. And I asked Croft that. He said, well, the guys are qualified. I said, well, that's fine. But what about the ones that really know this system? Right. Right. So oh, I, I, I understand. Yes, sir. I'm looking for clarity on a couple of three things you said. Okay. The California plan that the one man initiated. He went to his council, his congressman, right? His senator? No. It, basically, it was, a, it was a, a, a what we call assemblyman. Which is it, in our houses? We, we have we have two office, two houses in California. We have a Senate and an Assembly, which is Congress and the Senate. House and Senate. And there's 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 80 Assemblymen and 40 Senators, and then the Governor. And what happened was some community members got together and said, "Hey, we have a nitrate issue in our community." They went with their Assemblymen and said, "Let's go talk to the off, the, the Office of Drinking Water and the Department of Health." They rejected them, and they said, "Oh, really?" And one guy gutted the whole department. One guy, so it can, that I was using examples as it can be done. Okay, so then in other words, we, we have a house and rep. So we've got right. Jim Annick, Sheldon Neely. We should approach them first as one of the six fronts okay. and have them go to the, the water department at the state and yeah, ask for the records MDQ, that you said? Right, and you can use your water guys, yeah. Okay, so they're supposed to go there, ask for those documents, and if they are not presented or they can't give us to it, then we have to FOIA those documents. Right? Right. And the goal is to use those documents in the lawsuits to prove no. that they don't have it or to... Yeah. I'm, I'm looking for clarity. The other yeah. thing is you mentioned that they promised you change by spring. Are there any printed benchmarks that they're going to have to stick by so that we don't wait till spring? And you know, spring can be three month period. What part of spring are they talking about? Early spring, mid spring, and is there anything we can look at? Like you said, if they don't turn off the fluoride by February 27th, it ain't gonna happen in spring. If they don't turn off the iron by March 7th, it ain't gonna happen by spring. Is there any stair steps that we can be watching to make sure that when spring comes, they don't say, give us another three months. Give us another three months and then Kara Gandhi's here. Right. If the pastor will the last me. thing yeah, okay. I wanted to mention is that the city of Fit put out a request for a quality control engineer at the water department. Have you applied for that job? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Um, to, to, you guys are compound questions. <laughs> okay. To kind of get it all encapsulated into an answer for you is. My point is, one person in this room can make a difference and you can get political action to take place. That's number one. Number two, um, the benchmarks. The, what are they going to have to do? How do we keep them on schedule? Um, a number of people have asked, you know, how I will do that. You, um, you know, and what I was saying is if the pastor will grant me, um, uh, uh, I'm going to work on Sunday. 
Um, I'm going to I'm going to get on the plane tomorrow, and I will type them up. They're not going to be fancy. They're going to be these are the things I observe. These are the things you need to do. You can do them now, or you can choose to ignore me. That'll be the kick in the teeth if they don't. <laughs> if they do those things, if they do those things, and what's going to happen is it's going to be a really really strange event because I'm of the opinion that they're going to say, and this is what you were talking about yesterday, um, they're going to say, oh, we can't turn the fluoride off because it's, it's mandated. Um, what's gonna, ask yourselves this question, since you're a fighting crowd. Did you get a citation for the boil water notice? No, I didn't. No, 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 you did. The city got a, the city, when you get a boil water notice, that's an MCL violation, okay. you get a citation. So the city of Flint Water Department got a citation. Everybody saw the citation for the December failure of PHMs, right? Yeah. Where's the bleeding body? They got a citation. Oh, so what? Turn off the fluoride? Oh, so what? Flint said, we're turning it off, turn it off, give us a citation. So what? Fluoride's off. <laughs> right? So they proved I mean, we're already accusing them of not watching. Anyway. Yeah. We're already accusing them of not watching, right? So just turn it off. Okay? I trust Mike. If Mike wants to do some things with the, the water quality, with the aluminum, you know, no two water qualities are the same, which is why there's 500 different water polymers out there. Most people use a metallic salt. There's, they use, have you ever heard of alum? Mm -hmm. It's an aluminum salt. Ferric chloride, it's, a, it's an iron salt. And they use different salts to coagulate water based on the water chemistry. So that's your basic coagulant. And then they use, they use additional coagulants to help that process. You get a bunch of excited electrons in the water clumping together the dirt particles that like ferric, and the water's turbid, you use more ferric and the stuff settles out. He could make the decision not to settle out so much there and feed a filter eight over in that lime softening room. Basically turn off all that, that stuff that dirty the water up and just add a little bit of the aluminum over there. He could add it over in the, in the flash mixers. Give Mike the ability to play with the water and get it tuned like a fine Isn't that what he's engine. doing now? Give Mike that authority to do that. And then change those filters out to where you absorb all the, the carbon. What date does that have to happen by? Those are going to take a while to get because you've got to get on the phone and you got to get in line with everybody else that's getting it. But it has to be done by when? When, time. when does that have to be when? done by in order well, for it to be done in spring? I, as I was sharing with her yesterday, I already called a couple of factories and said, get ready. So, I mean, it's, it's, we'll, we'll let you cut the line. I'll, I'll, I'll put some pressure on a factory that wants to, to get it done, get it here. It's made in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. It's not I don't think the factory is the problem. I think the, the government is the problem. Right. The city is I'm the problem. That, I'm going to give them that time frame. And then they're going to commit to you as a community, not Bob, that they're going to do these things. If they don't do them, hold their feet to the fire. Keep pushing on those other five fronts. But what you asked of me was, when am I going to do this? I'm going to do it tomorrow morning. I'm playing right home. Okay, and I'm going to type it up. It ain't going to be fancy. It's going to be about as quick and clean and dirty as I just approached you with it. When you type it up, who will it go to? I'm going to send it as protocol directs to the mayor and copy to the entire city council. There you and go. Mr. Croft you go. and the emergency manager. And then what I would encourage you all to do is, is uh, MDEQ and the, the state representatives. What I did, I, I already, Erin and I have been talking, she's still in Australia until the 18th. I think Thursday she comes over. She comes on Thursday. I can't keep track because it's a day thing. You get home before you leave. Um, anyway, so when she gets back, we go to Washington, D.C. a lot. I will be sitting down in your congressman's office and you will see Erin. That's so that's going to take place. So, I mean, a, a lot of things are going to happen. You started it, you're going to have to finish it. I'll just be here to help. We're in the last yes. five minutes of questions. I just, I just wanted to say that I am on the Flint River kayaking over on Stanley and Tennessee Road, and I've been there for eight years, ten years, and this is what the Flint River looked like 2012, 2013, long before the water ever hits the water treatment plant. Last year, I went to the director. I said, the Flint River's sick in the spring. She said, no, the Flint River's not sick. 
I'm telling you, the Flint River got so sick that all the water lilies turned to mush. Turned to mush. Never once got a lily flower on them. Not one lily survived. And so they're treating the water, and the only ones that can do that and have that power to do that is Lansing. Nobody in Genesee County can do that. And I'm telling you, the water is sick long before it hits the water treatment plant. Please, please, please hear me. And not only that, but I talked to the chief ranger over on Stanley Road, and you know what he told me? I was on the water December 27th kayaking, and he told me that the Holloway Reservoir is so low that they're finding cars that have been in the Holloway for 20 years. We can't open the fire hydrants no more. Please, please pay attention. They're getting ready to drain Holloway right out of water, right off the fire hydrants. They don't care. Please hear me. We hear you. Yes, ma'am. They can't do an emergency, anything to stop it, city council can do it tomorrow. Yeah. I am fair. Possibly Yes. Uh, I wanted to ask a question that may not be as obvious. The obvious is the ones that the water smells, you know, it doesn't taste right, it's affecting the skin. But what about you know, residents I've heard from, they say their water's fine, that they drink what they shower with it. Are they being fooled into thinking that their water's good and really they could be suffering side effects also? Yes. Okay, if it's clean, if they live in like a, the way the water system works is the water leaves the water treatment plant, there's two big pumps and they go out and they hit that big high elevated tank and then they go a little further out and then there's two 20 million gallon tanks on each side of the system, 18 and 20 or whatever. Okay, and then the whole system operates on a flow. Okay, if you're on the pipe where it's first coming out, you're probably gonna get the best water quality. Okay, what they found, what Mr. Croft told me is they got, you know, a 24 inch valve over here with broken clothes and the valve over here broken clothes. So the water's trying to operate in a system that was designed a certain way and it, it's just not because somebody's gone and closed valves, somebody's moved things. Um, what will happen is, is, believe it or not, like if there's a big, if, if the water's coming out here and there's a big factory over here, what happens is, is that that factory's taking, like the Coca-Cola plant, let's just use this example, they're taking a ton of water, okay? And you live near there and all the water is fresh and it's running over here to the Coca-Cola plant and you're off that pipe, you get the best water. Coca-Cola shuts down because it's the weekend. Mm. Nobody's taking water down that line. On Monday morning, you get really bad water. Mm, wow. So it changes every day. And that's why I asked Mr. Croft for the hydraulic flow model. Because I can put that on my computer and I can tell you what's happening right now. It's not and, and, and did he give it to you? You just started making one. Okay. But we're supposed to have that, right? We're supposed to have that. And that's why I said, you've got to hold the regulator and Lansing accountable. And so the software for that is called H2O Net. You can download it at home. It's available from the US EPA out of the Cincinnati. Cincinnati is where all the research and the free stuff comes from from EPA. Go online, type in H2O Net hydraulic flow model. It's a big file. It might crash your computer, but you can use it. It's free. So city water department should have been doing that a long time ago because it would have told them. And how, okay, once you put all the pipes into this model, how you calibrate it is you go take tests around town. And so if you go over here and the chlorine is 2.6, you put that in the model. And then you go over here and the chlorine is 1.4, you put that in the model. And then you go over here and it's 0.6. What happened? And that will start telling you where the valves are closed or broken, or you're going to get stagnant water, or you're going to get the real clear water. You know, and all those types of things. Now, the reason that the real clear water causes me concern is, is because even if it's clear, it can still have chemicals of concern in it. We just don't know. But for them to say that, you know, the smell, the, the color, and the odor, or the, uh, the, the, the sight are, are okay, is just completely bogus. So it's one of those types of situations. I don't want to give you an opinion because it's not fair. The best answer is I really don't know, but I'd be concerned. 
The Home Depot, they tried to give away water filters. Is that a solution? No. Uh, let me tell you about water filters. Only because you asked, and I'll try to be quick. Please do not fall prey to people selling water filters. And the reason for that, <laughs> the reason for that is um, the water treatment, the home water treatment guys are dangerous. Okay, I mean they're like they're like uh, bad bad uh, bad stuff you buy on the streets. I mean they are not good. And the reason that they scare me. Yeah, they scare me. Is they sell you a home water filter, you don't know how to use it. And because you don't know how to use it, that water quality coming in from the city um, can cause those filters to actually become bioreactors. And you can end up poisoning yourself with them. So, and then, the, and then the people that use the resins, those resins are sometimes misapplied for the application. Filters work. Filters work. The Brita filter, all that is is the granular that carbon I was telling you about. Those, they're not going to make the water safe, but they're going to take out the smell. They're going to take out the, the, the color.